Uh, morning. Um, obviously, sitting here really disappointed coming off a, uh, a really tough loss. Um, not playing our expectations in, in, in a must-win situation is uh, is one we that it, hurt, it hits hard. And um, as a leader of this program and, and program, we've never shied away from our responsibility um, in regards to, to, to our standards and, and in coaching uh, where, we, where our shortfalls are. And uh, I think our program has benefited from that um, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it's my job to get us back on track and play the way that we're capable of playing. Um, and not just so much how we've said we're capable of playing, we've seen that. And uh, to get us back into that rhythm mentally, physically, and emotionally, uh, there's not a bigger week. And, uh, and I think that that's, that's really important for, for our program and our kids to know and for everyone to know. Um, our guts will be poured out, the enthusiasm, the commitment, the pride, the humility, the grit that, that is putting us in the situation we're in right now um, as a whole uh, and the growth that we've had um, in a broad, in a broad, broad look at it, um, we'll be doubled down. Uh, this is a big week. It's, it's rivalry week. It's senior night. It's cannon week. And that's a big deal for all of us around here. And I think that, um, our players will understand that our staff is full in. I'm still in, I'm full in and, uh, there's nothing more important right now. Marcus, when you look back at the last six games, is there one thing you can point to where something may have gone wrong or something happened over the last six games that just No, one thing. Uh, you know, I, I wish that, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I wish I could have pinpointed one thing early on. Um, you know, and, and again, I think you know when you get post seasons, when you get a chance to really get the fine tooth out, just because of the timing with everything. Um, but there's a handful of things that that have, that have inhibited us in those in that six game stretch, um, whether it be physically or whether it be roster wise, um, emotionally in this last game or mentally in the last game. Um, there's a handful of things that that I think we're constantly trying to teach. I, I, I don't want to, the, the injuries are one thing. You can't, those are the uncontrollables are the ones that I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on when I look back at it uh, and reflect on it because I can't, there's no excuses for, for not having guys. It just is what it is. And you got you to work it out, you know, it's, and it's, uh, and um, there's nothing you can do to fix that. You know, it's the pieces that, that, that come with execution. It, it's the pieces that come with uh, critical situations and keys to victory and, and um, kind of the, the, I think the onus of, of expectations and opportunity and where we're at now. And I think that um, we're comfortable and we're aware and, and, we're, and we're excited about expectations being the reality now of winning. I'm good with that. We're good with that. There's an ownership to that. Um, and the space between those expectations and when the opportunity arises to hold those up and to carry on and move forward and break through, that's what we're working through. That piece of it, I think, has been the thing I'm going to look back at um, and again, nothing's more important this week. I'm not doing anything in regards to that um, until after season. But when I look back and find that, that's the piece that I'm most excited about to, to really get into is, is getting our guys to understand the expectations to win now and to win regularly and to be consistent and to believe you've got to win these games and how to win those games. When you look at this week, Coach, it, you know, obviously it's the canyon, and it's, if you win, it's a springboard your next season to find a positive line with it. Is that something you're trying to impart on the guys the rest of this week about Ending the season on a high note, winning out the right way. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it's one thousand percent the motive. Um, the seniors are one. Um, the AJs, the Goots, the Ilials. I mean, these are these guys' last football game. And for for those who hadn't played, uh, I don't know really what to liken it to because I, I haven't been anything else but sports my entire life. I just know that the last time you sit in a locker room with a group with time invested in something that's really special to you, it's really hard, and it doesn't hit you till it's there. And so I'm going to make it very evident to these guys um, how important it is. Um, we're well aware of it. And uh, for the seniors, um, for the young guys, and for the program, for the community, um, for the college football rivalry, then you get into why it's important for this game and why it's important to springboard the young guys into a situation where you feel like you've got five wins, you've done some good things, you've got a lot to we, – we're not where we need to go yet, uh, not where we want to be, but there's some progress. Um, and, and I think that that's a huge piece. You've got to take that into recruiting. Um, and you got to build, build off of it. And so uh, those two, th that is the motive this week. There's nothing else. Is, is there more of a, a centralized message to some of the younger guys that, you know, will likely be back in prominent roles where it comes to those expectations and handling them? Because we had those conversations a lot when you guys were 4-1 and, and how you handled those going forward. Is it now that you have kind of a little bit more of the proof and the process is laid out, is there a, a different message, anything to those younger ones that will be back? There will be. That'll be after this week's focus, you know, because I think it's a longer message. I think it's a longer time. 
Um, it's similar to how you progress from, from last season's situations, which we have, which we saw, we saw progress this year, but not completed. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll definitely be something that we, that we use. I mean, you guys know I'm not, I'm not shy from work. So that, that's going to be a, a big piece in regards to putting all the details together for these guys to take this thing to where it needs to go. After the Hawaii game, you said that you felt like the team had lost focus. What did you kind of mean by that, and what ways do you see that play out in the Hawaii game? You know, I, I, was, I said that after the game because that, that was uh, – I, I don't mean lost focus in the, in the whole situation. Just in that game, in that specific moment, what is it that I saw on film, you know? And, and we were uncharacteristically uh, unphysical. Um, there was some communication errors that hadn't happened. We had some new guys in some new situations. We had, now, you know, got – uh, DJ Stuckey now in there at a guard's position, and, and that's in brand new communication for everybody. We got three or four new DBs back there because of some things that happened in the course of the game, which is new communication. There was just things happening that didn't lend itself to what I believed we were we've showed in the in the prior. And so, with the game of that magnitude and the preparation we had and the messaging we had, I felt like that 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 communication was there in the week in the buildup all the way up until really you know the kickoff. Um, and so when I set up the game, I, I was, there was something there was missing. And, and it starts with me, and I got to look back and reflect on me uh, first and what I can do different, what we can do different as a staff, and then figure out what exactly it was, um, you know, in some of those situations. And sometimes when we got back to it, um, it may be something really subtle, but um, those are the things that I saw when I set up the game that, that I felt like we didn't, we didn't handle. When you look at the other, obviously the offense and defense were major parts to the start, but for the entire season, Daniel Gutierrez's importance to the program and just how consistent he has been, how important was that for you guys this year? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I will never minimize uh, Gut's effectiveness on our program since being here. You know, he's been such a huge part. Uh, Walker has been put on scholarship because of his, his ability um, and, his, and, his, and his commitment to this program. Um, and then obviously his, his tenure of, of what he's done just in production is just um, obviously uh, speaks for itself. Um, you know, he was in situations that when he needed to score, he scored. That's the bottom line. I mean, you know, and, and that, that's, that's a huge piece of, of, of a program and, and what you want to do. Um, now, the piece that we'll look back on is he may have, we wanted it to be ones and there was too many threes. Um, and that's the piece, we'll get, that's one piece to fix. But um, good is a huge piece and, and we're going to, we're, we're excited for, for to send him out in the right way. Can you talk about AJ, Elio, Rex, Goot, Tavius, you know, your super seniors, and what they mean leadership-wise and what they, what they mean and have meant to the program, especially underneath you right now? Yeah, I mean, those guys are pretty special. They were, they, they've been here since, since the jump, you know, since we've, since we've had to, you know, uh, build this thing up in, in, in a way that was ours. And um, I think that the, the, the blood, sweat, and tears that those guys have poured into this, the commitment they've made, the effort, and on and off the field, um, you know, is, is uh, again, a huge tribute to, to the growth we've made. And uh, each one of those guys has, has grown. It's really fun to see in a lot of ways, um, to see where they were, where they were emotionally and physically and mentally and where they are now to some of the things they're doing um, is a lot, a lot of the reason why we do what we do. And those guys – in this program, we'll be able to look back and say, I was there for the beginning. You mentioned the offense in critical situations, 4-14 on third down to think, oh, one on the big fourth down conversion. What do you guys need to do to make make plays happen in, in those moments offensively? Yeah, I mean, those the third downs are critical. Those are those are some of the keys to victory, right? I mean, you got the explosive play numbers up, um, and you had the third down third downs up uh, last week uh, versus a competitive team. And then this week, a lot of it's coming down to being, you, it's hard to convert those long situations, you know? I mean, there's five of those, I think that there are five or six of those in there that are, that are third and longs. And again, that's, that conversion rate analytically is low, you know? And, and, and so you can't put yourself in those situations. There was penalties that put us in that situation. There's penalties that <coughs> took back a touchdown. Um, there's just things that, that you can't do, um, that can't happen to put yourself in a, in, in a situation to be successful. And you got to be in positive situations and, and, uh, to, to give yourself a chance because those are hard. You know, and so being able to convert some of them. We converted a couple of them, uh, a couple of those longs, good catches. We had one scramble, too, and Doug's recognizing main coverage and, and, and no one for him. And there's some conversions in there. But, again, those are, it's hard to be 50% or 45% on third down when you've got five or six of them of yours that are going to be in, you know, XL. So, again, the penalties and, and managing first and second down are, are really the biggest thing, you know. And, and it's, there's no secret to that. you just got to be better, better in those situations. And, and, Putting yourself in those situations is, is, uh, is hard.
Coach, after the game, you said that going in, you'd warn the team that this type of game gets set up this way. Can you expand on what you meant when you said set up this way? Yeah, I mean, because, you know, we, you got you got to be careful sometimes. And, and I gotta, I'm got i growing with the whole thing, too, of, of how to how to put yourself uh, messaging-wise into a game where um, you know it's tough to play. You know, I've played over there. Um, I've talked to coaches that have gone over there a bunch recently. Has anything changed? How to travel, what the traps are. Uh, what the pressure is, what the expectations are, uh, their senior night. There's a lot to unload and unpack. You got to be careful how much. Uh, my opinion is you got to be careful how much you give to those guys and start packing um, the the process of thinking through all that carefully. And uh, and and I think that we did we did uh, enough that I felt comfortable to where you can go on a trip like that and feel like the uh, entrapments of, of of distractions and excuses that come up. Um, limit your opportunity to win, um, whether it be how you travel. We take a, a huge jumbo plane with every modality we have for science and long luxury seats and uh, to try to minimize the, the flight issue. Um, we're, in a, we're in a comfortable hotel, obviously. We're, we've got a yoga as soon as we land for 30 minutes to get guys uh, unwound. And, and there's all the things we do, to, the science and, and, the, and the preparation to get guys to understand um, some of the entrapments of this trip um, we're going to minimize for you. You know, we're going to minimize the time over there because it is hard. It's hard to go over there and not have guys want to walk on the beach and go swimming and hang out. And and uh, I've and I say that experience. I've been over there. I've seen that. It's 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 hard. I've talked to other coaches. It's hard. And so you try to set that up um, and get guys to focus on 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 what it is. And they and they play hard over there. They play really hard over there. They play a lot of times different than they play over here. Um, and so you try to set those things up the best you can without being uh, too obtuse and get too crazy. Um, and I felt like we did a lot of those things that, I, that we felt comfortable with. I felt like the guys, um, there weren't surprises. And I don't like surprising our guys. I like to be honest with them and, and set things up. And, uh, you know, that game right there meant a lot to, this, to what we're doing. And so it was important for us to understand everything that could be there. Um, and now I need to respond and do it. Talk about it's one thing. Doing it's another. You know. What's What's been your uh, experience in the UNLV UNR rivalry so far in your uh, coaching experience? Um, well, well, the first year was a pandemic. Uh, it wasn't even in the end of the year, I don't believe. It was like midseason. And um, that in itself was just trying to keep my head above water and figure things out and figure, figure out names and stuff like that. So um, uh, last year going up there um, wasn't uh, was a, was a, was a very good football team, as we knew, and, and we didn't play well. Um, that was a, it was a, it was a, it's a rival game. It was dirty. There was a lot of things that happened in a rival game from the beginning of the game to the end of the game on the sidelines over the top of you. I mean, that's, that's what happens in some of this stuff. You know, there's a head butt in the middle of the game that knocked over our players out. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that happen in those games. I know there's, there's stories about what's happened here before. Um, I wasn't here for that, but I think, uh, understanding the challenge of, of winning a football game and trying to make sure that the things that can distract you again from the game uh, without the, just the utter importance of the whole thing are things that will have challenges that, that you face in a rival game. We, we've talked so much about the learning process for the guys and these critical moments and, and all of that. For you personally, is there anything just over the course of this year and through all of these games and the streak and everything that you've kind of just taken away as a coach learning one? Yeah, I mean, that's, po that's postseason. You know, I don't want to get too far, too, out, too far in front of reflective. I think that um, when the season's over, the next, the next step is with full disclosures, is to take a full dive, you know, a full evaluation starting with me um, into what we can do and how we can do and not be afraid to make changes if we need to make changes. Um, that's, that's what I think I could be most honest about, you know, and I think I would do that every year. I get right to it. Um, you know, I probably need to take a nap, but that's, that's for after the game. Um, I think uh, I'm not afraid to, 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 to understand that a deep dive, uh, a full look back, uh, starting myself and staff and everything we can do um, across the board in the program is, is, is the thing you look back at after the season. What are some of your short and long-term goals, I guess, for this program going forward? Obviously, this week is 1,000% is the only thing I'm thinking about. Um, you know, we've set, the, we've set the standard here to, to win, you know, to win and to, and to progress and to play quality football, develop quality young men, um, to have a good culture. Um, and I like some of the stitch we make. We're just not quite there yet, you know, right now. Um, right now in the point. Now, as we move forward, we've got to build on what we got, you know, um, and what we're starting to do. And uh, winning and going to bowl games is 
what I'm accustomed to. And so that's that's what these guys know, and that's what they want to do. That's what every program wants to do. That's what I want to do. That's been the, that's been the set here, offset since we got here. So looking back and and being able to build something uh, that that we that we know we've talked about is important. But again, that's that's after this week. And Coach, you know, coming into this big game, how do you sort of keep your team's mindset in the right positive place? Yeah, you just bring it back to us, bring it back to how we can play better, um, bring it back to, to what we've done this season that have put us in a situation to win, to win football games and to play really good, effective football, <clears throat> to play together. Um, those are what I keep bringing it back to. Um, I also don't, like I've said before, I, I'm not high. I don't want to hide things from from the uh, the emotional piece of games like this um, or the importance of it. I, I don't I don't think that's fair. I think you, you have to put um, importance on a game. You've got to put that eagerness and attention to detail on a game so that guys understand those expectations need to be met. And uh, I think that's how you get good. The favorite Thanksgiving side dish? Gotcha. Every year. <laughs> uh, it could change over the course of the year. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we aren't, we're not real big traditionalists in the, in the house. You get a Puerto Rican dad and an Irish mom. Uh, I think there's a habanero sweet potatoes are pretty different. So that's probably the favorite side dish there. A little different. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. So we've got two of our 10 super seniors playing their last game Saturday. And the debut, press drop debut of Duke the Duke. Questions? All right, guys. This could be the last game in your careers. Like, have you thought about that? What's going into your this week's preparation and mindset going? You know, plus, both you've won the cannon in the past. Three nine teams have won the cannon. So, how important is that? Uh, I mean, for me, I know for for Goot too, it's super important. Uh, we're two and two. Well, actually, no, my class is two and two. I'm not sure he came a year before me, but. You know, it's a big deal, but the preparation isn't going to really change. You don't want to, I don't want to change my process too much. You know, I, I know what works for me and the guys around me. But, uh, yeah, like you said, this could be the last one. Uh, I'm hoping that it's not. I'm hoping that there's more games in my future. But, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for everything that this game has brought to me and, and the relationships formed and uh, the places I've been able to go. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to have any regrets. Uh, leaving this season, and, and I don't have any. So, you know, if this is the last one, this is the last one, and I'm okay with it. Um, I'm two and three against Reno, so I've been here since 2017. And, um, of course, I'd love to end off with the win. But um, uh, like AJ was saying, I am extremely grateful just to, um, to even be here. Um, I feel like a lot of guys need to realize that not everyone gets to do what we do, you know, and, like, this isn't easy. Um, so, and, then, like, this week... I mean, it could be my last time ever putting on pads, so I'm just trying to enjoy it as much as I can. Daniel, when you think about your journey, just when you got here as, as a walk-on, just have you had a chance to reflect on the last number of years and just how far you've come to set the records that you have and the impact you've made on this program? Yes, absolutely. So I actually almost quit twice after my freshman year and then my junior year. Um, I just felt like this... Uh, wasn't for me, but luckily I had the right people in my corner, my parents, my brothers, um, just telling me, you know, just give it another year, and if you like it, um, keep going at it, and if you don't, we'll support whatever you do next. So uh, um, luckily I listened to my mom, and I staked it out, and then last year um, went well for me, and then this year as well. When you quit, when you almost quit twice, I guess, what was the, the mental battle you were kind of going through? With that um, so it's just like different, you know, in high school, like you're always like, you know, they say you're the best player on the team, and then you come to college and you realize that, you know, you're not, everyone's just as good as you or better, you know? So like me coming out here, um, I had to realize that it wasn't just about me. That's something I had to learn back then. And uh, it did humble me a lot. And um, I mean, I guess I used that as motivation to um, be where I'm at today. For, uh, for both of you guys, you obviously have seen sort of the trajectory and the fact that there are now expectations within the program and even leaving that now, what kind of resonates with both of you, the fact that you've seen some of the, the lowers and now that it is kind of swinging this way, um, kind of leaving their impact that you might have been the first to kind of get this program where it wants to be? Yeah, I mean, uh, the foundation, I would say, has been laid now here with uh, Coach Rowe and his staff and 
And, um, you know, we've seen the, the lowest lows and some of the highest highs breaking records in the beginning of the season. And, you know, uh, that can be hard on teams that don't have the, uh, the perspective and the ability to, to stand firm and just keep your head down and keep working. But, you know, that's never been a problem with this team. Um, good or bad, you know, we put our head down and we work. And, and that's what I love most about um, my teammates is the resilience that we uh, demonstrate. But, um, you know, like I said, it's just the foundation. The, we laid the foundation. And, you know, I wanted to be part of the first class that went to a bowl game in uh, however many years, at least a decade. But uh, that's kind of what the, the pain I was feeling after the game was realizing that I wasn't going to be a part of that. But, you know, I, it feels good to know that I, I still, was, uh, still was part of the foundation being laid. And, uh, you know, my impact will still be felt here. Boston, when you look at the last six games, is there anything that you can point to that kind of doomed you guys to go from that four and one start to where you are now? No, I mean, there's nothing like, there's not one particular thing where I could just point at and say, this is why uh, we've been losing. You know, as a leader on the team, I, there's things I, I wish I could have went back and done or said or, you know, had more uh, meetings just with us players and just getting everybody on the same page. But, you know, hindsight is always 2020. Um, this whole this whole season has been a good lesson for me on leadership and how to carry myself and uh, expectations and how to how, how to have high expectations and demand that for the people around you. So, you know, it's not all for nothing. I still was able to get a lot out of this. AJ, you've had a few games against Reno now. In the last couple of years, they're a lot better than what they are record-wise. Mm -hmm. What's it like playing in those games with, with so much at stake and with really everybody, everybody's on 10 as far as, you know, their attitude? Yeah, I mean, whenever it's a rivalry game like this, the record really doesn't matter. It's, it's going to be a good battle no matter what. Uh, my freshman and sophomore year, we were the underdogs, and we were able to, to bring the cannon back. And then these past two years, they got us. But, you know, the main message I'm going to be telling my guys is not to let the, their record or, or the amount of losses they have fool, fool us, because we know that we're going to get their best punch. And um, we got to be able to, to respond and to punch, punch back as well. But, you know, these games are always fun to play in. There's a lot of uh, hostile energy between the two programs. It's a real rivalry, you know, don't get it twisted. So I'm definitely excited to take the field and I'm glad that this is my last game. Can you talk about your journey? I mean, looking back now from walking on special teams guy to being the captain and, and leading the conference in tackles, like. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a wild, wild journey. Um, you know, I dealt with a lot of injuries here that kind of stopped me from uh, from having the mark that I wanted to in the beginning of my career. But I've always had that work ethic and, you know, I just figured that if you work harder than everybody else, uh, there will be no choice but to have you on the field. So whether it's special teams, whether it's been starting on defense these past two years, I just, I've been embracing my my role, no matter what that, how big or how small that role is, and just trying to make the most out of, out of every moment that I have on the field. Running down on kickoff a couple of years ago, uh, blocking on kick return, whatever it was, just taking advantage of every second on the field and not taking anything for granted. And and again, it's the work ethic, it's the off the season, I mean, off, during the off season, um, the grind and, and um, you know, just having the right people in my corner. For either one of you guys, um, before you got here, this rivalry was so one-sided. Do you guys take pride knowing that you've been a part of the class that has made this rivalry competitive and for you guys to have won the cannon a couple times? Okay. Um, uh, so I'm going into my sixth year, and, and I have seen like a lot of things change around here. And um, you know, Reno, the past few years, have always had a better record than us. Um, but I always hear these guys talk about, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Rivalry is always, you know, who's the best team that day? You know, so, um, and like this year we have a lot of young guys in the team and I feel like they still need to learn how to mature a little bit more. And, um, and I understand that this is, this is a game and we're supposed to have fun, but I mean, it's competition as well. You know, you want to be the best college uh, team in your state.
Danny, you know, breaking that school record, can you just talk us through your emotions and what it means to you for all the accomplishments you've had throughout your UNLV career? Yeah, um, I mean, I pers if I'm being honest, I don't really like to focus on that. It kind of just comes along with what I do. Um, I don't really go into a game uh, thinking about that record. I just really just think about that kick. Um, I'm just trying to win games with these guys and um, just do my job. And I feel like uh, the coaches and my teammates do a great job in uh, trusting me. Um, last game we had, it was very, it was raining, it was windy. Um, we had some pretty long field goals, and then these guys put me in the right position. So if they have faith in me, then I have to have faith in myself. Austin, you mentioned not letting the record kind of get in your guys' heads. Does it feel like that's kind of what happened in Hawaii? Nah, I wouldn't say so. Um, we just got outplayed, bottom line. There wasn't any, uh, it wasn't like we um, didn't think that they were going to come and, and give us their all. We knew that. We knew, we knew going in they had nothing to lose. Uh, it was their senior night, and you know, from the looks of it, it just, felt, it just felt and it just looked like they wanted to win more than we did. So you know, I put that on me as a leader of the team, having to get the guys ready. And, and uh, I don't want to use the word motivated, but you know, just there was a lot on the line for us that game, and, and we didn't get the job done. And, and it's disappointing, but you know, I'm just thankful that we have one more game, and, and it's this rivalry. So. After the uh, Fresno game, uh, Marcus said that he didn't think that this team should be judged off of its last two games. Well, how would you kind of evaluate this season and, and how everything's gone for you guys? You know, it's, a, it's been an interesting season for sure. Just the way, uh, the way we started so fast and the records that we broke, uh, starting the season four and one, and then, and then just the middle of the season, just a bunch of adversity that we faced. Um, Losses in a row, you know, it's tough on the team. But, um, you know, like I said before, we're resilient as a team and as people, and those are qualities that take you much further than, than uh, the football field. And uh, it's hard to, to, it's hard to see it now because we're in the middle of it. But, you know, the more time you spend reflecting on it and the more years go by, you realize that, you know, these traits are applicable to, to other aspects of your life. You know, it's not just, uh, it's not just for you know this season or this game. There's a lot of good things that we can get out of this, and there's gonna be, gonna be a lot of times where you're faced with adversity within your life. And you know, I said this to the defense uh, a couple weeks ago. You know, if this is the hardest thing that you have to go through in your life, then you're gonna have a pretty good life. So uh, you know, there's a lot of traits and a lot of um, learning lessons and, and curves that we've been through as a team, and it, you know, it's made us stronger together. But you know, we could take that and, and apply it to other parts of our life as well. And then, AJ, you've had several accomplishments as well. Can you just talk about what this rivalry win would mean to you? Yeah. Um, you know, it would mean a lot just to go out with the bang um, against the rival, rival opponent. Um, just to send me and the rest of the seniors out on a high note. You know, it's been a rough season, but, you know, uh, just finishing off the right way would mean a lot to me, especially against the team up north. Um, you know, their, their record doesn't show up, but they are a good team and they got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. Um, it's going to be a good game. I'm looking forward to it. You guys got a pie guys at all? Thanks, Pie? Yeah. I like apple pie, yeah. Apple pie? Apple. Are you a pie guy? I'm not a pie guy. So. Uh, no. You a pie guy? No. Uh, it's <laughs> pumpkin pie? Definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> Danny, you attempted 10 field goals in two games. Um, no. So before that, I went like almost three games without kicking a field goal. And then I got one at a SDSU. And then these past two games, I did not think I was going to get 10 attempts. But um, when I do get the chance to go out there, I just love doing what I do best. Have you ever heard of a kicker getting that many attempts? I have. In two games? No, I have not. Five for 10. Favorite favorite dish like turkey like are we talking like main dish side dish mm, stuffing. stuffing stuffing is the right answer so <laughs> <laughs> any other answer I don't know <laughs> thank you guys thank you thank you.